Welcome back to the Pittsburgh Pirates rebuild. We start off with a situation against the Cubs. Christian Walker up to bat. Runners on first and second. Line drive to center field. That will score a run. Pull us within one in the top of the ninth against the Cubs. Runners on the corners, two outs. John Rhodes does pinch run for Christian Walker. That brings up Henry Davis 0 for 4 on the game. First pitch inside, ball one. Next pitch, swings through a changeup. And he fools him again. Can he fool him a third time, this time inside? Henry Davis goes down swinging. Cubs win the first game of the series. In game two against the Cubs, Jared Jones is on the mound. We're up 2-0 in the seventh inning. Elias Diaz, fly ball to center field. Celestino back to the wall, gets it, one out. Next up, Jake Bowers. Ground ball up the middle. Fielders got a little confused there. That'll put runners at the corners with one away. Michael Bush up to bat here. He strikes out two away. Nico Horner. Low. Full count. Ian Happ on deck. We'll do the full count pitch here. Ground ball to Hayes. He fields it cleanly, flips it over to Walker. Ends the seventh inning. Two nothing Pittsburgh. Bottom of the eighth. Ian Happ is up. Fly ball to Walker. Near the dugout there. He's be able to get that. One away. That brings up Suzuki. Moretta is in the game now, relieving Jones. Fouled off, one and one. Two one pitch, pop fly to the second baseman. Bay, two away. That brings up Christopher Morell with a fly ball to right field. Zawitzki's gonna go over there, see if he can play it against the wall here. That'll end the eighth. Bay up to bat in the top of the ninth with a shot to the gap there for a single. He's going to try to stretch it to a double, but then he thinks again and goes back to first. That brings up Jared Triolo, and Bay does steal a base there. 2-0, runner at second, one out, top of the ninth. Here's a full count to Triolo. Ground ball to second base. That moves Bay to third. Runner at third, two outs. O'Neal Cruz then decides to make it a 4-0 ball game with a 1-0 pitch deep to right field. 4-0 Pittsburgh. Moving to the bottom of the ninth, Castro's in with a four-run lead in the ninth inning. There's a nice hit by Bellinger. It hops oh, out of bounds, out of the, out of play there for a double. That brings up Dansby Swanson. First pitch is low. 2-2 Two -two count to Swanson. Fly ball to Zawinski. He's going to play it, throw it to third base. Hold Bellinger at second. One away. That brings up Diaz. Is this going to be playable for Zawitzki? I don't believe so. He's going to try to throw him out at third, even though he had no chance. Runners at the corners, one away. Bowers up to bat here, and that's going to be a ground ball that scores a run. Four to one, Pittsburgh. We decide to bring in the closer, Arebu, at this point. Strike one to Michael Bush. One two pitch, strikes him out, two away. That brings up Nico Horner. Fly ball to Kirilov. Kirilov's able to rush in and get it. Pirates win game two. Jump into the rubber match of this series. Three to two, Pittsburgh in the bottom of the seventh. Mitch Keller is still on the mound. Only 74 pitches thrown to this point. 0-2 pitch to Bauer, strikes him out. That brings up Michael Bush, one for two today. He grounds it to Hayes, flips it over to Walker, two away. That brings up Joey Weimer with a one for two today. Fly ball to Zawitzki. That will retire the side. Sends us to the eighth. O'Neill Cruz, 0 for one. Fly ball to left field, gets on base there. Single for Cruz. Henry Davis, the next batter. Deep fly ball to center field. That will not get over Bellinger's head. Cruz has to retreat back to first base, one away in the eighth. That brings up Brian Hayes, who strikes out for two outs. Christian Walker, ground ball to first base. Nice play by Bush. Send us to the bottom of the eighth. We bring in Loa Siga here. 0-2 pitch, strikes out Horner. Mandrigal up to bat here. Fly ball to Hayes, line drive to Hayes, two away. And then Suzuki, strikeout looking. Sends us to the ninth. Triolo leads off here with a ground ball to Bush. He throws over to second base, back to first double play to end the top of the ninth. Needing to give a few of our pitchers a days off, Ferguson did take the mound in the bottom of the ninth for a save opportunity. 
He strikes out Bellinger and then gets Swanson to fly out to Walker and foul grounds there. The next batter, Diaz, fly ball to Sawinski. The Pirates will take two out of three against the Cubs. Taking a quick look at the standings here, we are seven games behind the Reds and three and a half games ahead of the Giants, four games ahead of the Marlins in the wild card standings. Things are looking pretty good for the Pirates here late in August. As we get close to September, we need to take a look at some of the players in AAA to figure out exactly who we're going to call up. First, we're taking a look at good old Paul Skeens. And through the month of August, he pitched five games in AAA. He went with one win, two losses, 28.1 innings pitched. He gave up 26 hits, 15 runs, four home runs, five walks, 40 strikeouts in 28 innings pitched. Pretty solid there, but the ERA is still at 4.76 in AAA. Just got to get this figured out for this kid. We know Skeens is going to be good long-term, or at least we still think so. He's an 80 overall at this point, but struggling pitching at, big, at the big league level. What are we going to do with him? I think it's a kind of an obvious choice to bring him back up in September to take one of those two spots that we do have. As you can see, I'm giving up a home run here in the third inning to Eaton. But does it make sense completely? I'm not 100% sure. We already used his option, so if we bring him up and send him back down, it's no big deal. Ah, just choices to make. And we wanted to see him here, see if he's improving a lot. He had a great game besides giving up just a few long balls, and that seems to be the thing with him is good outings, lots of strikeouts, just gives up a lot of runs, and we got to figure out how to get that to improve. But another player we wanted to take a look at was John now, we haven't talked much about O'Reilly in this series because he's a 62 overall and a D potential. But this year, with the closing role for the AAA squad, 26 games pitched. He's got 14 holds, three blown saves, one save. I guess we do have him in the setup role. 30 innings pitched, only giving up two earned runs in 30 innings pitched. No home runs. Six base on balls, 27 strikeouts. He's someone to take a look at. He could help in the bullpen during a playoff push. Just haven't really looked into him because of his 62 overall, but at this time of the year, we're really looking at the statistics and ignoring the overall standings of these players. O'Reilly came in and did a great job to close out this game. Pitched the eighth and ninth inning. Just was pretty solid, and the overall ratings are deceiving. It's just 62, but... He looks a lot better than a 62 overall. Throws a fastball, a cutter. Well, he throws a four-seamer, a cutter, and a two-seam fastball. Not a lot of variety in his pitches. Hits per nine is 62. K per nine is 62. Base on balls per nine, 46. Home runs, 55. Clutch, 50. And control, 54. Velocity is a 74 and breaks a 58. I don't know if he'll do good in the big leagues. He might be at his sweet spot here in AAA, but he might be someone we bring up and find out. The next player we're going to focus on is Franz Talbot. He is batting 309 through August in AAA with 22 home runs and 80 RBIs. His overall is up to a 72. He's super close to being ready for the big leagues. You see here he starts out with a solid hit up the middle for a single one for one on the day. The next play here, we get to see him in the field. And this is the big question. If he's ever going to replace Hayes, is he good enough in the field? And here's a nice double play to Johnson and Mayo. What a combo there. Those three players could end up being. His next at bat here. <clears throat> the next at bat for Franz here. One for one on the day. He's up in the fourth inning. 0-0 zero, zero ball game. Pitch right down the middle. You can't do that to Franz. That's a deep shot to center field. Center fielder makes a good attempt to rob it, but that fence is just too tall. Franz with a solo home run in the fourth inning. Next at bat for Franz. Two for two on the day. Another pitch down the middle. He gets a hold of this one even better. He's three for three, two home runs and a single. Two nothing Indians at this point. We get to see Franz in the field again. A nice ground ball. Once again to him, flips it over to Johnson, back to Mayo. What a combo there. 5-4-3 double play. Love to see that in the big leagues moving forward from these guys. I just love watching it. Franz over to Johnson. Johnson to Mayo. Could be the future.
Well, we take a look at Franz's last two home runs. Just pitches left over the plate by this AAA pitcher we're facing. You can't do that to an up-and-coming superstar, which I believe Franz is. Let's see what he can do in this next at bat. 2 nothing ball game. He's got a runner on base this time in the eighth inning. And he absolutely goes yard one more time. Franz even looks a little confused by his three home run day. This guy's got a bright future. Is it time? I don't know. And we know we're going to be pulling up some people from AAA to the big leagues, but would Joaquin Hood be a good option to pull up to AAA after those moves happen on September 1st? So far through August, he's got a 2.78 ERA. He's given up 48 earned runs, 11 home runs, 63 walks, 133 strikeouts in 155 innings. Solid future, I think, for this kid, but I don't think he's ready. I think he needs to finish the year in AA. Maybe next year he makes the move to AAA. He's going to be a ways away from making the climb all the way up to the big league roster. It's going to be some time before we even think about putting him on the 40, man. He's got a little bit of issues with control still. Gives up a lot of long balls, as we do see in these highlights here. He gave up two home runs in this outing. Where really the only things that really damaged him were a couple long balls. And that one's in the parking structure out there. Just a deep shot to right field. But I'm still excited about Hood in the future. He's not a velocity pitcher. He, he definitely is a finesse location pitcher, mixing up with all the different pitch types. He's got a four-seamer, a changeup, a 612 curve, and a splitter. You'd like to see some left to right movement, but all of his pitches really just move vertically. Not a lot of horizontal movement on his pitches. So maybe that will hold him back in his career. Time will tell on that, but I still think we got something good in Hood here long term. This pitching staff is starting to look pretty solid, at least from the starting pitching standpoint. And we might have a few trade pieces here as well because we're going to get log jams with starting pitching very quickly at the big league level. After taking a look at some of the players in the minors, let's take a look at all of the draft picks so far this year. You can see Talbot's up to a 72. We talked about his 309 batting. Solid year so far. I mean, amazing. Everything's increasing. Power against lefties is decreased by five. Not too concerned about that. The fielding is increasing like we need to see. He's going to need some time. Right now, the best thing we could probably see him at is a DH. He's got a good future. We'll skip Manuel Hernandez. He's already in the big leagues. But let's go ahead and look at our second round pick, Reggie Merrifield. Merrifield's got himself up to a 57 C potential. Somewhat of a disappointing draft pick here in the second round. We, we did reach for Merrifield, and he's not turning out to be a great draft pick yet. He is still in double A. 40 outings here. You can see 38 innings pitched, 37 hits, three home runs, 14 walks, 19 strikeouts. Not going to get a lot of strikeouts for us. 3.76 ERA. He's going to need a year or two in double A. Joaquin Hood, we did just feature so we could skip him but there is somebody a little bit above him overall wise israel valenzuela he's got himself up to a 70 overall 10 games pitched four and three record 56 innings pitched 20 runs given up eight home runs 10 walks 50 strikeouts a 3.20 era i think he's right where he needs to be for the rest of the season philip tejada He's up to 62 overall. He's going to be a long road to the big leagues as well. So far, a 2.91 ERA. Pretty solid in 99 innings in 14 games pitched. He's got an 8-2 record. Looks like he started 14 games. I think we had him in as a reliever early on in the season and adjusted that. But he has only given up four home runs in 99 innings. That's pretty solid. 1.52 whip. I'd like to see that a little bit lower. 72 strikeouts in 99 innings. Can't complain about that. Four-seamer changeup and cutter is what he's throwing out there. Another one a few years away. And we have been, you know, talking a lot about Mayo. How is Kobe Mayo doing in AAA th this year since we sent him down? He's struggling a little bit. 226 batting average, five home runs, 17 RBIs. Oh, that was the major leagues. 238. So he is batting just a little bit better than he did in the big leagues. Uh, eight stolen bases, 15 home runs, though. That's pretty good in 79 games played. 71 hits, almost a hit per game. Yeah, he's getting there. He's getting there. We need to see some more improvements. Fielding's 
getting pretty close to where we need it for first base. He'll he, sh he should be fine. I think we'll make that official move after this season and make his primary position first and his secondary third base. Wanting better stats from him in double or in triple A, but we will be patient. And the natural first baseman in Bryce Eldridge, you can see a lot of improvement across the board from him up to a 66 overall, but batting 288, pretty solid year, 12 home runs, 58 RBIs in 103 games played. He'll finish off the year in double A as well. And in working our way through August, we have a big series against the Reds. Three games at home. We start the series eight and a half games behind them. They're 76 and 49. We are 67 and 57. We win all three of these games. We tie our win total from last year with over a month to go in the season. Pretty excited about this start. You can see the standings there. Eight and a half games behind. We've pulled away from St. Louis a little bit and Chicago. Not really worried about them that much. On the mound for us is Jared Jones. He's got his record up to 7 and 9, 150 innings pitched, ERA down to 3.18. Solid way to turn around the season for him. He is rising up to pretty close to being considered our ace at this point. And TJ Friedel will be the first batter he faces. First pitch right down the middle. Celestino is just going to walk out there and watch this thing leave the park. 1 0 Reds. What a shot there to start off the game. Come on, Jones. Next batter face here is Matt McLean. Gets him to ground out to Bay. One away in the top of the first. One nothing Reds. That brings up Jonathan India, who strikes out. Jones getting the strikeouts going. Lane Thomas next batter, 0-2 pitch. He strikes out as well. Moving to the bottom of the first. Bay swings at a high pitch. One away. Alex Kirilov batting second in today's lineup. Fly ball to center field. Good contact there. Not deep enough. Two outs. Take a look at the lineup today. We got Bay, Kirilov, Cruz, Davis, Hayes, Walker, Zawinski, Celestino, and Olivares. That brings up O'Neill Cruz. Career high, 24 home runs this year. He's got the average at 268. We can deal with that. Back in the three hole in today's lineup. There's a ground ball that gets by the first baseman for a single for Cruz. One on, one out. And we have Henry Davis trying the hit and run. He misses and causes Cruz to get thrown out at second. And moving to the top of the second, Ellie De La Cruz leads off with a 1-1 pitch. High fly ball in foul territory. Davis gets under it. One away. That brings up Will Benson. Two for two. Two and two pitch. Strike three. Candelario strikes out as well. Four strikeouts through two innings for Jones. One hit, one run given up. Henry Davis then grounds out to Ellie De La Cruz to start the bottom of the second. Cabrian Hayes takes a walk. Runner on first, one out, the bottom of the second. Then Christian Walker strikes out two away. Jared Jones back on the mound. Ground ball to Walker, plays it well. One away in the top of the third. That brings up Shea Langoliers, who hits a nice ground ball to Cruz. He's able to field it, but not in time with the throw. Single for Langoliers. And then we have a ground ball to Cruz for a double play opportunity. One and two. That gets us through three. Two hits given up by Jones at this point and one run. Here's Gilberto Celestino to start the bottom of the third. One nothing ball game still. Ground ball to third base. That'll be one away. That brings up Edward Olivares. He's 288 on the year, getting a nice start today instead of Triolo. There's a deep fly ball to right center. That's going to get over the fence. One to one ball game. Edward Olivares with his fifth home run of the season. Clutch at bat here early on in the game. Back and forth go the two division leaders of the National League Central. And Bay up for his second at bat of the day. 0 2 pitch. Ground ball to first base. Two outs. We jump to the top of the fourth here. Matt McClain up to bat. Ground ball to Bay. He feels it. Flips it over to Walker. One away. Jonathan India up again here. Another one catches all of the plates. India takes it to right field. Two to one. Reds. That would be Jonathan's, I believe, yeah, his 20th home run of the season. Bottom of the fourth now. We get Cruz to walk to get on first base. Henry Davis 
fly ball to right field. That will cause Cruz to have to hold back. Great play out there in right field. One out, runner at first. Key Brian Hayes with a nice shot to right center. It gets into the gap. Cruz is going to put it into an extra gear. He's going to score on the hit. Key Brian Hayes with a beautiful double to tie the ball game up. 27th of the year. Back and forth we go. And Zawinski's up with two outs. There's a deep fly ball to center field. Back to the warning track, but great play by the center fielder. 2-2 ball game. Two home runs for the Reds and a couple runs for the Pirates. There's another strikeout to end the top of the fifth for Jones. Through five innings, he's given up two hits and two in. He's given up four hits and two runs. We give Jones the sixth inning as well. He starts out with a 3-2 strikeout there. One out in the top of the six. Matt McClain up next. Ground ball to Bay. He fields it like normal. Over to Walker. Two away. Jonathan India after his home run this time. Another ground ball to Bay. Jones is getting the ground ball working. Here's O'Neill Cruz in the bottom of the sixth. Deep fly ball to center field. The team's gotten a lot of good hits, but most of them have gone to the warning track like that one. 2-2 two -two still. In the seventh inning here, we get a ground ball to Cruz by Thomas. Cruz shows off the arm there, gets him out at first. Ellie De La Cruz up to bat here. He swings through it, the curveball, two outs. Seven strikeouts. That brings up Will Benson, one, two counts. Catches the corner there, eight strikeouts. Through seven innings, two runs given up, four hits by Jones, and eight strikeouts. That'll end his day, what an outing. We got Gilberto Celestino with a nice single to right field in the bottom of the second with two outs. Next batter is Olivares, who grounds out to third base. But it goes into the outfield. We've got a chance. We're alive. Runners at first and second. Two outs in the bottom of the seventh. We decide to pinch hit for Bay. Jared Triolo comes in here. Nice righty-lefty matchup for us in the bottom of the seventh. First pitch to Triolo is low, ball one. Three, two pitch, low as well. He walks the bases loaded, it brings up Alex Kirilov. We thought about pinch hitting for him, but it's only the seventh inning. Got to save some of those bats for later in the game. Kirilov does ground out to first base to end the seventh inning. Castro comes in in the eighth inning, doing his, you know, setup role. It's even though we're not leading, I still wanted him in there. This is a deep fly ball. Is Olivares going to be able to field it? Leans up against the wall, one out. The next batter, McLean, ground ball to Triolo. Flips it over to Walker. Looks like we are in the ninth inning with one out now. There's a nice base hit by India. Getting a little scary here. Runner at first, one out. Thomas. Strikes out. Castro still in the game in the ninth inning, but we go to Ferguson. Elect to have De La Cruz bat right-handed. He gets a base hit. We got two runners on, two outs in the top of the ninth. Will Benson, fly ball to Celestino. He's able to get under it. Takes us to the bottom of the ninth. Tie ball game. Sawitsky with a ground ball to third base to lead off the bottom of the ninth. One away. Gilbert Celestino, ground ball to the third baseman. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. Edward Olivares swings at a 3-2 pitch to Ellie De La Cruz. That'll take us to extra innings. Loa Siga, ground ball to Cruz. One out, keeps the runner at second in the top of the 10th. Steer up to bat here. He goes down with a check swing strike there. Two outs in the top of the 10th. Langoliers ground ball to Cruz. He's able to play that easily. Take us to the bottom of the 10th. Triola leading off here with a nice base hit with a chance to win the game. Olivares is going to round third. Is he going to get there in time? He is not. We still have a tie ball game. One out in the bottom of the 10th. Runner at first. What a throw from third or from right field there. Guns him down. Don't run on that man. Don't run on him. It took a perfect throw, and they got it. And taking a look at this other angle, it is very close, but I think the tag just gets in before he touches the plates. Jump to the top of the 11th. We have Lovasiga still in the game. Cruz fields that one, but the runner does move to third. There was two outs, though, on that play. I tricked you. 
We got a runner at second. Key Brian Hayes does go down looking. That will bring up Christian Walker. The Reds are a little scared of Walker, though. They're going to elect to give him the intentional walk. Runners at first and second now. And we have two outs. And we elect to not pinch run, but pinch hit. Wyatt Lankford is coming into bat for Sawinski here. 243 on the year. Hasn't gotten a lot of playing time the second half of the season. 0-1. Oh, 1-0 counts. Ball is just inside. We got a 1-0 count on Lankford. Tie ball game in the bottom of the 11th. Runner at first and second. Two outs. It is now 2-0 to Lankford. 2-0-6 with runners in scoring position. Kid's got to work on that aspect of his game. He's got to be a little more clutch. There's a foul ball. 2-1 count. I don't know if we should have sent Lankford to AAA to give him more at-bats, but he's still progressing. And there's a nice one that's going to get through. Cruz is going to round the corner. We're going to take game one against the Reds. Now we're down seven and a half games. The team is pumped. This is what we needed to do to start this series off to end August. In the second game of the season, Arebu is second game of the series. Arebu is on the mound in the top of the ninth. Three to one. Pirates are leading. There's a fly ball to Langford. Two outs now. That brings up Langoliers. That's a nice base hit. Celestino was playing very deep there. We'll hold him to a single. Two-run game. Tying, tying runner at the plate. Lane Thomas goes down looking. Pirates win. Game two. Pull within six and a half of the Reds. Moving to game three. Loisiga on the mound. Runners at first and second. Up by two in the seventh. Langford gets that, lazily throws it to Cruz. That allows the runner to advance to third. Runners at first and third, one out. Will Benson up to bat here. Nice ground ball to Cruz. Tries the double play, gets one for Triolo. The throw is not in time at first base. One run does score. It is a four to three ball game now. And then Ellie De La Cruz gets a nice single pass Walker there. Moves the runner to third base. De La Cruz gets to second. Runners at second and third, two outs in the seventh inning. Gonzalez comes in to pitch, gets a ground ball to Hayes. Hayes puts the tag on De La Cruz to get us through the seventh with the lead still. Moving to the ninth inning. Arebu with another save, strikes out De La Cruz to sweep the, to sweep the Reds and move within five and a half of the division. Taking a look at the standings now, five and a half behind. We've tied our win record, our win total from last season, and we're still in August. Six games behind on the win column, five and a half total behind. The Marlins are four games behind us. The Giants are six and a half. Things are looking pretty solid. You can see here, yeah, 70 and 92 last year. We are 70 and 57. What a turnaround this year. The next day, we beat the Royals nine to five, and our pitcher that day was Harrington. He goes six and one thirds, gives up three runs this time his era is up to three but he's doing pretty good we had castro get a blown save we'll have to note that that wasn't the best thing we wanted to see there but the bats were alive here with 10 hits and nine rbis in this game gotta love it gotta love it we had a home run from bay and two from rodriguez in that game solid outing for rodriguez the next day we have another loss this time against the royals three to one and the following day here on the 24th of August, we win 7-3. to three. We take two out of three against the Royals. Then a tough series against the Dodgers. This one, you know, we probably should have played a few of these games, but we needed to move through the series the season a little bit faster. We lose the first two. The next day, we come in. We're up three runs, but we blow it, end up losing 4-3 to three in this one. Harrington did end up giving up a few runs in this one. Pitched him a little too long there. He gave up three runs in the seventh inning. And we do end up losing in the 10th inning to the Giant, or the Dodgers there. Dodgers going for the sweep on the four-game series. And we do get a win, 8-2. to two, Avoid getting swept by the best team in the league right now. Or probably the second best team. I think the Braves have the best record. But two games left in the month. The Red Sox beat us 5-0 on this first one. This is a team we should be beating. They're, they have 59 wins on the year. We need to sweep them. But we did take the second game of the series in that gets us through August and as I do this voiceover and recording I realize we uh we do have one more game in August to play but we haven't done that yet so let's uh let's make sure we get that done
while recording this earlier, it did throw me off that we have a view of August here, but one of the games in August is showing up on the September one. We'll go ahead and simulate this one as well to get us through the whole month of August and see where we're at in the standings. We lose two out of three to the Red Sox, which is, is not ideal. Taking a look at the box score here, we got six hits on the game. Two from Jeb. He's getting a little bit of playing time there, but Avedo gives up only one run. Just a low-scoring game. We end up losing in the 11th inning, and Gonzalez gets his eighth loss of the year. But that's not making me feel very good. We did pull within five and a half games, and now all of a sudden we are nine games behind the Reds in the Central. Jumping to the wild card now, it's starting to get scary as we get into the last month of the year. Only a game and a half lead against the streaking Marlins. They have won six out of their last ten. We've won four out of our last ten. We're starting to struggle a little bit. We're starting to come back down to earth, I believe, but there's still a whole month for this to get decided. We take a look at the statistics across the team here. Let's see who's leading with home runs. We do have Brian Reynolds still leading the team with 28 home runs. Then there's Hayes with 27, Cruz with 26, Walker 22, and Davis 22. RBI total, Hayes is tied with Davis and Reynolds all at 75, and then Walker with 70, Cruz with 65, Triolo with 50. Stolen bases, Walker. Walker with 17 stolen bases, Triolo with 14, and Bay with 13. Kirilov leading with the batting average, and then we got Reynolds in there. Olivares, Davis, Hayes, and Walker. On base percentage, Kirilov. What a surprise. Slugging percentage is Reynolds as well. He was just having a beast of a year. Beast of a year. We look at pitchers here. The most wins is Avedo, then Keller, then Gonzalez, and then Jones. Jones. Hernandez is six for six and six. Saves, we have 31 saves for Arebu. I can't really complain about that for what our situation was coming into the year. 162 strikeouts from Jones so far. Best ERA on the team is Castro, then Ferguson, Loa Siga. Our three signings this offseason. Look at that. I think we did well there. I think we did pretty well. That's where we're going to leave off this episode. We will look at the September call-ups at the beginning of the next episode and potentially get through the rest of this season. Going to be pretty fun. We got a handful of games. We're going to start off with three against the Reds, though they have such a large lead. I don't think it matters. We got three against the Cubs, four against the Brewers. That's the rest of the division rivals. And then a tough series on the road, we have six games against the National League West there with the Diamondbacks and Padres to end the season. And just kind of looking at the records here of each team, you know, the Reds, we know, are in first place team. The A's, well below 500. The Cubs, below 500. Tampa Bay, about 500. Milwaukee's below 500. The White Sox aren't very good. The Diamondbacks are good. The Padres aren't very good. So a, a mediocre record or schedule to end the season. Let's find the Marlins here. So we look at theirs. They have Baltimore, which is not a tough outing apparently anymore. And then the Cubs, the Rays, the Mets, the Phillies is a tough game. So they have three tough games here, but their record, they have six games against teams above 500 the rest of the way. The Marlins schedule favors them in this wild card running one and a half game lead only one in the win column that's going to be tough it's going to be a fun end of the season will the pirates break through and take the wild card this year or will the marlins upset them or maybe the cardinals get hot we'll see you next episode